It's a design that could be a lifesaver. This lamppost is built to give way when a vehicle hits it. The top of the pole will slip away from its base, allowing the driver to regain control of his vehicle and bring it to a safe stop. Normally, if it was a traditional steel lighting column, the car would have come to an instant stop um, and the passengers inside the vehicle would have been potentially killed or severely injured because of the severity of the impact. It's just one of the innovations on display at this exhibition, which is showing the latest ideas aimed at making the roadworking industry safer and more efficient. Wayne Johnson's company has been putting down road markings for more than 30 years. He says they're trying to automate the process as much as possible to protect their workers. The answer for us is really to remove all our operatives from the carriageway so that if there is an incident they're not, they're not out, they don't hit our operatives, they, you know, they may be driven to barriers or maybe into our equipment, but everyone's safe. And uh, what we're trying to do is improve the efficiency so we're there on the carriageway for less time. Therefore, obviously, we don't have to be out there so often repairing the roads. Some of the ideas have come from abroad. This equipment for quickly clearing accident debris off a road is based on a machine that's used to clean Bondi Beach in Australia. And this million pound setup is an American import. The two halves join together to surround and protect workers while only having to close one lane on the carriageway. Despite all the innovation though, traffic cones it seems won't be disappearing just yet. Although that may change in the future. I believe that there is a future for cones, but it might not be a long-term future for cones. We want to minimise the number of cones in the network, but we've got a big road building programme and so traffic management is essential to do that safely for our workers and people passing through roadworks. But potentially the future offers opportunity for connected vehicles and smart infrastructure that might look at things very differently. Highways England's innovation budget is around £30 million a year as the government tries to find ways of using the latest technology and ideas to keep our roads safe and moving. Kevin Ashford, ITV News. Scotland could become a living laboratory for the testing of driverless vehicles. Well, that's according to the Transport Secretary, who said computer-controlled cars and lorries could improve road safety and make it easier to get around. Here's our transport correspondent, David Henderson. For many, cars are a vital part of life, expanding our freedom, getting us from A to B. But there's a flip side. Each year around the world, a million lives are lost on the roads, most the result of human error. A glimpse of the future at the CAV Scotland conference in Edinburgh. This car drives itself, its computer brain never tiring or getting distracted. This is called the Origo driverless pod and it's primarily designed for the first or last mile of any commuter's journey. Well, it's currently being developed, but the company who've put it together think that within two years, it'll be in use in cities around the world. And it could be coming to a street near you, wherever you are. The government making clear today it wants Scotland to emerge as a living lab to develop driverless vehicles. We have very unique rural areas that allow them to test out the technology in areas where uh, digital connectivity is much more challenging. It, it could also offer better opportunities for them to make sure that the systems are operating effectively, not only in the urban areas, but also in the rural areas. California. It's where most of the work's being done on driverless cars, but its road conditions are miles away from what a Scottish winter can bring. That's more like it, the far north of Finland. Now the woman in charge of this huge test site wants to team up with researchers here so vehicles and the roads are ready for the future. This is the first call for Scotland to join to Aurora Borealis Intelligent Corridor ecosystem as a partner, as a joining partner. So we have to uh, share our information and uh, share our best pra practice and, and familiarise ourselves. So uh, this is not your business, this is our business with you, <laughs> I think so. Robots are not just in the driving seat. Road marking could get safer and faster thanks to this device being used by the company WJ. Machines, it seems, are taking on new roles on our roads and highways. David Henderson reporting Scotland. Woo! 
Last night, we unveiled the five nominees for the greatest sporting moment of the year, with the winner being announced live at the BBC Sports Personality of the Year ceremony on the 16th of December. Yes, for every televised awards ceremony, there are many more that happen without us even knowing about them, but are just as important to the winners, and Arthur has been to one of them. Um, thank you very much. Hey! Never mind your Oscars, your Emmys, your BAFTAs. I've got a ticket for the Highways Awards. And here they all are. Construction companies and transport groups from around the UK. All certain they'll win trophies for their best road improvements. In fact, it's hard to find anyone who thinks they've lost. It'll be great for the business and it'll be an excuse for a party in London. Are you excited? Absolutely. Yeah. Quietly confident but very nervous. They're the heartbeat of the industry. We're an independent body set up to reward excellence. These people here are making our roads more reliable and more efficient. The entries include technology to 3D map the maze of piping beneath the road, circular potholes that bond better to the road and supposedly make the repairs last forever, and a quick way to bury cable and speed things up for people waiting for broadband. We've had over 100 nominees this year. That's been whittled down to 40 finalists and 13 winners. And who decides the winners? The judges are independent panel of experts representing all the sectors in the industry. Lots of chances to bump into rivals and subtly find out what they're up to. I'm going to sneak in to find the trophies. And here they are, look. Road markings of the year, maintenance efficiency. Oh, the excitement is palpable. So, let's find a few contenders. Now, I think of traffic cones as what students have in their bedroom. But actually, a new type of traffic cone is up for an award tonight in the new technology section. When cones are knocked over, it can be hours before help arrives. But not with this beacon, the Smart Taper. It sends the patrol crew an instant alert, so they're on the scene in minutes. But the moment has come. It's awards time. And the winner is City of London Corporation. Oh, look, the people I met earlier. Another entry that's caught my eye gives some bright news to people who hate driving at night. It's a solar-powered cat's eye called the Solar Light. It increases visibility tenfold to 900 metres. So you're getting rather than 3.2 3 seconds to react at 60 miles an hour, you're getting essentially 30, 32 seconds. You know, these are particularly useful for areas of roads, so maybe like old-style roads, so they're, they're not very well lit. Yeah. Everyone's getting more and more excited. The evening's moving up a gear and people whose names haven't been called are getting worried. You're feeling a bit on the edge of your chair? Do you know what? Every minute, tension mounts. Pretty nerve-wracking. I'm really excited, though. Will the new traffic cone beacon get the award? It's time for the new technology one. So who'll drive home with the gong? The winner of the award for best use of new technology goes to SNC Lava Lamps, Atkins Business. Bad luck for Smart Taper, but the man representing them tonight is putting on a bravish face. I'm not the sort of person that, that, that has a begrudge about it, but yeah, we should have won. <laughs> the winners, who came up with the radar detection system for stranded cars, are happy to disagree. And now for road marking project of the year. Will it be cat's eyes? Against them, laybys and emergency refuge centres on hard shoulders. I'm delighted to announce that the winner of this year's award is, and this is a mouthful, WJ Group, Highways England, Clearview Intelligence. It might be a joint win, but they did it. Hey, you won! We did, yeah, we're really, really, really pleased. Did you have an early night? No, no definitely not an early night. night. Well, I've learnt a lot from these awards. I've never been behind the wheel of a car myself, but if I ever were, I'd be a lot happier after tonight. Um, Paul Hutton, you're um, from Smart Highways. Um, you know, they're, they're, presumably, you do you see a benefit in smart motorways? And, and what about this point about being sitting ducks? I 
completely agree. In fact, one of the things when I first wrote about smart motorways was what Edmund said, which was I thought that the refuge areas needed to be closer together. The issue is we've got a capacity problem and we've got a budget problem. So trying to build our way with more lanes on a motorway would be the ideal thing to do, but there just isn't the budget there for it. So consequently, using technology to monitor the way people are moving along the roads. There are cameras that will see if you've stopped. There are radar to check you've stopped. In theory, and it doesn't always happen, but in theory, then the red X's should go up above the uh, running lanes. People should be warned about the problem, and therefore you should be safe. And there's an awful lot more technology than there would be on a normal, old-fashioned stretch of, uh, of motorway when, if you're on the hard shoulder, you're in a dangerous position, even if you've got that lane to yourself.